We're now going to move on to Governor Liaison Reports. If anyone has anyone anything to report, I will admit that liaisoning in the time of Corona has been quite a challenge. Governor Stevens. You, you, you were so fast, you forgot you had muted yourself again. I'm going to start cursing in Klingon that you're still muted. Okay. I keep trying to get to the document I'm reporting on. And all right. Uh, so the I wanted to report on the uh, civil rights law section um, because they are uh, actually coming up with their um, annual awards meeting and uh, they're going to have a virtual concert on uh, Thursday, September 24th. Uh, and the awards and the virtual concert will be at 4 p.m. with, and I don't know how this works, but happy hour and a meeting at five o'clock. Um, each year we, uh, we honor uh, various people in our areas for their contributions uh, to civil rights. And we either, and we, we give out both the Distinguished Service Award, which is usually to um, legal professionals who have uh, really shown a lifetime of service in this area. Um, and also the Civic Leader Award, uh, which uh, goes to either lawyers or legal workers or community activists who have promoted uh, civil rights and civil liberties and human rights. Um, the uh, And we're going to be giving out both the 2019 and 2020 awards and our 2019 recipients, the Distinguished Service Award uh, will be presented to Neil Fox and, and Lila Silverstein for their work in stopping capital punishment and contributions to racial disparity research. The uh, Francis North Civil Leader Award, Civic Leader Award will be given to Reverend Harriet Walden for her tireless work on police accountability and police community relations. And Harriet was a presenter at a CLE uh, by the Civil Rights Law Section in 2017 on that topic. In 2020, the, the Distinguished Service Award uh, will be presented to Ron Ward. Uh, for his trailblazing success and leadership to increase racial diversity and participation by those who have been traditionally underrepresented. Um, most of you know that Ron served as president of WISBA. I don't know how many of you know that Ron was a part of the, um, the monitor team on the uh, Seattle consent decree uh, under Merrick Bob. He was uh, Ron was the associate monitor um, and doing that work, uh, again, as it relates to police and community relations and um, uh, changing the way we do our policing. The Francis North Civic Leader Award will be uh, presented to Mara, uh, Mora Villapando for her tireless work in advocacy for immigrants, refugees, and those detained at the Northwest Detention Center and for showing us how mutual aid looks in practice. And the Civil Rights Law Section has uh, established a new award called Keeper of the Flame. And that's for actually younger lawyers who are doing the work um, uh, and making a, making a difference now early in their career. And our first recipient will be Sandy Restrepo for her tireless work organizing, empowering, and advocating for immigrants and those who seek refuge and asylum. So um, I would hope to uh, make sure we send this out to not only the Board of Governors, but uh, elsewhere and uh, I'm virtually looking at uh, <clears throat> at Sarah Nagowski for her help with that, and, and or Diana and uh, Diana and Paige for the diversity stakeholders. But uh, it's been a pleasure to serve as the liaison for for the uh, civil rights law section, 
which of course, by the way, was a section I chaired for a couple of years. So thank you. Thank you. Governor Angelo. Thank you, uh, President Majumdar. Um, in the wake of uh, George Floyd and the Supreme Court's call to action, a new task force on race and criminal justice reform was convened, um, headed by Professor Chang from Seattle U. Um, President Majumdar appointed me to be the liaison to that committee, um, or that task force, I should say. Its first meeting was on September 11th. Um, it was uh, quite a meeting. There were 84 participants, largest Zoom meeting I've ever been in. Um, and it was, um, just to, to go back a little bit, 10 years ago, there was a similar task force that was convened and that issued a report. Um, and so many of the members who were the stakeholders on that team are actually now on the current team. Um, we had a great presentation by Justice Stephen Gonzalez. Um, as I said, the three deans of the law schools um, are represented, as well as uh, many stakeholders, the Council on Public Defense, um, numerous public defenders, and numerous prosecutors from various counties. Um, as Professor Chang said, it is a diverse and inclusive group. So um, he really has asked that anybody who's interested, um, please come attend these meetings. If you want information about um, the Zoom coordinates, let me know. I know there are many legal minds on this board um, and many of whom could have some wonderful ideas about criminal justice reform. So um, please do get in touch with me if you are interested, the more the more the merrier. Um, but anyway, the, it's going to meet every month. Um, so the next meeting is at the beginning of October. And that's my report. Thank you. Any other governors? All right. With that, we will be moving on to the big item for the afternoon. We're about 26 minutes behind schedule. But let's go ahead and begin Budget and Audit Committee Matters. President Majindar, sorry, if I could interrupt. Of course. Um, I'm not officially the uh, liaison for character and fitness, I, but I do want to encourage anyone who has time next Friday, the character and fitness board is experiencing something that is very rare, a public hearing. It's a re reinstatement hearing uh, for someone who had been previously disbarred and they are seeking uh, readmission to uh, the, life, the practice of law. Uh, you can get the, the links from the website or from Tara or Hanada, but again, it's uh, something that will give you an insight that you may never have seen how the process has occurred. And I would encourage people to, if you can, take an hour and just watch what that process is like. Thank you. That would be interesting. Um, 